Here we go. Step number nine. Front, back, and side moldings. We're just going to be framing around your whole storage chest with some miter joints, cutting those to fit. I've already done numbers one through six on your blue paper. I just pre-cut these to, to save some time. It just has you cut some boards about 16 inches long, two of them about 26 inches long, joined at the edge. I cut them on the table saw to three and one eighth wide. Uh, we have planed them on the planer down to three fourths of an inch thick. So all that stuff you guys know how to do. So I just went ahead and just pre-cut those to that point. So now we're looking on number seven on your blue paper and, and follow along with me, please. It says mark the best face of each board with an X. And again, the reason why we're doing this is we're choosing which face we want people to see because one of the faces is going to be against the project. You're not going to see it. And it's up to you on that. Just quickly just say, I like that one the best. Put an X on whatever face you think looks the best. It's all, you know, we all care about looks. That's the most important, right? The most important thing is looks. Be picky. What do you like the best? Don't settle for something ugly. All right. Okay, next, it says use the router with the 45 degree chamfer bit to route both edges of each board and have the face with the X down. The board here has a 45 degree chamfer. It's just a, a 45 degree angle while it's cutting. And you just want your X facing down. We're just going to run both edges. Remember the edge of your board is the long part right here, not the end. So don't do the end grain. We're just doing the edge of the board. I've had some people mess up and do the end grain, so just do the edges only. X down. Now, if you feel more comfortable using push sticks on here, you can use the push sticks and run it through with the push sticks. This board's actually big enough, you can hold on to this to get your hands away from the bit if you want to just use your hands, that's fine. We'll turn it on, go the way the arrows tell us, both edges. <laughs> both those edges there. And that's all I want you to do on each of these boards. So you're going to have to run the other boards, same thing, X down, run both those edges. the fence a little bit and you can see it started to cut and then it kind of did a little part where it didn't cut very clean. That might happen to some of you. What should we do? Run it again. Yeah, run it again. It'll just clean it up. So if you miss a spot or you can inspect them, if they don't look nice, run them again just as long as you have that X down, it'll clean it up. And it'll clean that nice up so it doesn't have any of those bumps. So, Look on yours after you run. If there's any spot you need to rerun something, go ahead and do that. Okay, moving on. Now we're on number nine. It says use a table saw to rip your boards to a width of two inches. The one inch wide cutoff strips will be used for the top moldings and the two inch wide strips will be used for the bottom moldings. So come over to the table saw. Now what we're doing here, this is kind of just another trick that you can do that you're gonna get two boards out of one and it makes it a little bit easier. Right now my board is three and one eighth inches wide. I'm setting my fence to two inches and that's, it's gonna cut off a piece two inches wide. My leftover piece, it's gonna be one inch wide. Now if you think about it, okay, my board is three and one eighth and I'm cutting off two inches. So why is my leftover piece not one and one eighth? That makes sense? Are the blades because the blade thick? thickness, yeah. the blade is one eighth of an inch thick. And so what it does, when I'm cutting that two inch wide piece here, and then the blade is actually one eighth of an inch thick, and so the part in between just turns to sawdust, and what's left over is one inch. And so we could have just,
gotten one board and cut it at two inches and then get a different board and cut it at one inch. That would work. That would be fine. But this just is a little bit easier and faster. You only have to do one cut and you get two boards instead of doing two separate cuts. Plus, if I have my fence set at one inch, it's, it's you know, so close to that blade, I can't really get my push stick in there very easily and it just kind of jams things up. So if you set it at two inches, and we're just going to cut this wide board and we'll get our leftover piece. This is just one way to, to get two boards out of one. So, an easy way to do that. Alright, it does not matter which edge you put against the fence. They, it doesn't matter. So, okay. just choose one of the edges. X up or down doesn't matter. You know, we're still going to save that good face. It doesn't matter. So, just as long as you just cut it right at two inches, use that push stick, get those rounds out of the way. The board that gets cut off, you want to save it. Don't throw this away in the garbage. So there's my two inch wide, and the other one is a one inch wide piece that just gets cut off. So that'll be on the bottom, and this one will be on the top of my storage chest. So save both pieces when you cut them. Okay, we're going to do that quickly on the other ones. We just got it set at two inches. We're going to cut a two inch wide, and then we're going to save the one inch wide scrap piece that gets cut off. all our pieces and we've got two out of each one, a big one and a small one out of each one here. So we just don't want to lose any of these, don't throw any of these pieces away. Alright, next we're going to go and start cutting some miter joints over on the miter saw to get these things to fit around. So come on over to the miter saw. Okay, uh, before we cut those miters here, number 10 it says use the miter saw to cut a 45 degree angle on one end of each molding. So basically what we're doing Again, we've got our big wide piece and then the smaller piece is cut off. The wide piece is going to go on the bottom with our routed edge facing up. And then our smaller piece is actually going to go on the top with the routed edge facing down. And we're just going to cut these at a 45 degree angle so they wrap all the way around on the top and bottom. I found it's easiest to cut one angle first and then we'll match it up here and then we'll cut our second angle. I've had some people try to just mark both angles at first and then go to cut both angles and most of the time they end up cutting it too short. So what I would recommend is get your boards and line them up where they need to be around your project. You can just kind of place them on here close. And then we're going to mark the direction that you're cutting this 45 degree angle. Okay, so get it kind of close up here in the top view. We want to make sure our angle is cut the correct angle. Do we cut this way or do we cut this way on our angle? And it, and it matters. And the way you want to go is the same way that you see your little lock miter here. Your lock miter angle is coming from the inside out to the corner. So we're going to make this 45 degree angle from the inside out to the corner. And I want you to just draw a line at about 45 degrees saying which direction to go. You're not drawing where you're cutting, you're just drawing the direction that you're turning the blade. And you may want to do that on the other side too. I'm not marking where I'm cutting, I'm just saying, okay, this one's going out the other direction, I'm coming out this way, so I need to do that same direction here. And notice I'm not even going on my corner, I'm just coming out here, just saying, cut the angle that direction, 45 degrees. And you can quickly do that on all your boards, just mark an angle out 45 degrees about on each of your boards here. So you know where, not where, but which direction we're cutting. Alright, and it says just cut one angle. So come over to the miter saw. We need to go at 45 degrees. Okay, I'll use this one, it's fine. 45 degrees, and it matters which way you turn the angle. 
If you notice when I'm cutting this, I'm tipping my board up against the fence. You're not laying it flat. Don't do it that way. We're going to angle it upwards so we can cut that angle the way we drew. On this particular one, there's a little trigger underneath, and you can pivot this saw. Is that the right way? No, I need to go the other way, right? So go, and then they'll click in at 45. I still want you to lock that down just to guarantee it's not going to move on you. There's different spots that will actually click in on, you know, 32 and a half, you know, 15 degrees. There's different spots that will click in, but find the 45 degree angle, click it in, and we're just cutting one end. It doesn't need to be on your line. You just want to make sure it's at a sharp point when you cut this. So we're going to hold it nice and tight. I like to leave that saw down when I make this cut. If you pull it up while the blade's spinning, sometimes this little piece here hits the blade and goes ding and flies across and, and occasionally it chips your board a little bit. So if you want a nice clean cut, leave the saw blade down when you make it. Now don't cut the second angle yet. We're just cutting one on every board right now at the, at the way we need to cut it. Okay? So like on these big ones here, I'm just going to cut one angle. Just going to cut one angle at 45 degrees. Back that out of the way so that doesn't hit the blade on the way back up. You just want to have a nice sharp point on the tip when you're cutting these. Now I'm not cutting the second angle yet. Just cut one because here's the reason why. As we come back over to my project, now we want to try to get our second angle cut. Don't just guess. Here's what I want you to do. It's an easy way to do this. You're going to line up the one angle that you just cut with the edge of your board on your project and you want the heel, the heel is this part and then the toe is the point, but the heel needs to line up right on the edge of your project and an easy way to make sure that's going to line up is take another one that you've cut at 45 degrees and place it next to it and where they meet together you're going to be able to pinch those together nice and tight now we can move this one out of the way. We know that one's lined up where it needs to be. Some people just mark the top over here where it needs to be cut. Now that could work, but again, it's, it's hard to get it perfect like that. An easy way is you're going to mark the back side over here right where it hits on the side of your project. And I just draw a line straight up and down right on the back side. Okay? So now you can see my line where you're going to be cutting. So again, one more time just in case you didn't see that. Line up the front on one edge, get it perfect, and then mark the back side where it hits. And we know we're going to go this direction, and there's my line where I'm cutting. And this will be an easy, accurate way to get these perfect so you don't have to start over and, and cut them too short. So when we cut the second angle now, we come to the miter saw again, we need to have it at 45 degrees, but, but I want to see my line. My line right now, if I hold it like this, I can't see my line. So I want you to turn your board around so you can actually see your line on the outside. Am I going the right way? No. No, my angle says I need to turn the saw blade. So I'm going to turn my saw blade over here, 45, lock it down. I'm going the right way now. And now I can see my line, and here's an easy trick to do now. Instead of just trying to line it up and then starting the saw and bringing it down, with the saw off, I would bring it down, and you're going to be able to see right where the blade comes down to hit on the board. And you can just line that blade up right next to your line. You know, you just don't want to go too much like that. Line it up where the blade will hit right next to the line. Hold that real tight. Now we'll go ahead and make the cut. Again, I like to let that saw blade stop before I bring it up. And you can see I'm pretty much right on my line. I've got a little bit of my line still there. And I want you to leave your line when making your cut. So don't cut off your line. Just line it up. Leave the line. We can always cut more off. You just can't cut more back on really hard. So it's really hard to cut more wood back on. You can try, but it just doesn't really happen very well. We're going to repeat that same process on each of these. Now that should be lined up perfect. You know, you grab your next one, 
line up your angle that's cut together. Make sure they're nice and tight. Mark the back side right where it hits on your project. And then we can go ahead and cut that one as well. Knowing that our angle is the right direction here, bringing it down, getting that lined up right where you want. Now here's another little trick you can do. So a trick you can do to cut off the tiniest little bit. Because some people they put their board up there and they try to get it lined up and they try to cut it and they always end up cutting way too much off when you're trying to take off just the tiniest little bit. So a trick you can do is get your board out of the way, bring the blade down, I'm on this side over here, so bring the blade all the way down with it off, take your board and bump it into the side of the blade. You guys hear that? Hit the side of the blade, hold your board really, really tight so it's not going to move, lift the blade up, Cut. It takes off just a sliver, just the tiniest little bit. Now you can see I'm closer to my line. I don't really have a big gap between my heel and the, the line drum. So that's another trick you can do. Bring the blade down, bump it into the side of the blade, and then bring it back up and cut it. And it'll just take off the tiniest little bit. And that should be enough that we can get these lined up right where they're at. And they're perfect on that side now. We continue the process all the way around and go ahead and cut all your moldings. When you do your, so that's the bottom moldings. When you do your top ones, the smaller ones, it's the same exact process. You know, mark the angle, which way you're cutting, cut one angle, line it up, draw the back side and cut the other angle. It's difficult to do this on your project here because they keep moving and falling. I would recommend just take your whole project, flip it upside down, Okay, take your whole project, flip it upside down, and now we're doing it just like we did the bottom ones, but these are going to be on the top. You're just going to line them up. We know our angle's going this way. The other angle's going out this way. You're just going to cut one angle, line it up, and mark the back side and, and cut it all the way around. <coughs> it's easier to do it if you flip your project upside down, so you don't have to hold things. Let the table hold it for you. So I'm just going to cut one of these here. Come over to the saw, make sure your angle's the right way. Okay, I gotta turn my angle the other way because the line I drew is facing the opposite way. Cut one angle, make sure it's a nice sharp point. Let that blade stop before you bring it back up. This little tiny piece sometimes gets hit, and so now we're gonna mark where it hits, lining it up exactly where it hits. And come over to the back side, mark the line on the back. Now we can see where we're cutting with our line. Make sure you see your line facing you. I need to turn my angle the other way. Come down to where it's on your line. And then again, you can see just barely a little bit of my line still remaining. Now I make this look easy. When it's your turn to do this and get them all cut, it's a little bit more difficult than what I just show you here. So I would recommend cut it big because we can always take more off. You just can't cut more back on, like I said. We got them all cut making sure everything's going to fit and if you need to have someone help hold things into place and make sure things are lining up with no gaps. Okay. Uh, when you're gluing this, you don't need glue on the entire face of the board because part of it's there's a little gap underneath so just put the glue on the face that's going to be touching the board. Spread it around everywhere and when you're pinning this with the pin nailer it's got to be held real tight. You don't want to have any gaps, things like that. Spread it around. Again, I probably don't need it have on the very bottom because that's going to have a gap underneath there, so just where the glue's going to hit. 
You also want to make sure you get some on the miters when you go to attach the other boards with the miter. So I'm going to put some on the miter as well. And line them up. Get them on there nice and tight. On the small ones, I would do about three pin nails. If you don't know how to use a pin nailer, come talk to me and we'll show you how we got to make sure we connect the air hose. Remember, it's not going to shoot unless the tip is pressed in. So you don't have to worry about it accidentally shooting your friend across the shop or anything like that. I'd put one maybe near the side here and hold it tight. Make sure everything's are lined up where it's going to be. Press that in nice and hard one time on the trigger. Come over here, get the other side, line things up. And then maybe just one in the middle. If there's any gap, push hard enough that that gap disappears if there is a big gap. If we need to, we can still clamp these on. The pin nails just hold it into place while it's drying. The other thing I would be aware of is these bench tops, they're not flat. So if you're on a bench top that has tons of glue or other things and you put your molding on there and your molding's up at an angle because it's sitting on a big dry piece of glue, you know, move it to a flat spot or get something else flat to put it on. So make sure these are lining up nice and perfect and flat. So on the long ones here, again, just glue it on there, spread that glue around. Make sure you get the miters. Don't forget to put glue on the miters. Spread that around, get it nice and tight. These moldings, this is what makes your project look fancy. If you are too fast at this and you're not taking your time and you're not careful, it, looks it, it really doesn't look that good. Yeah. <laughs> but if you get them nice and tight and perfect, that, that's what really people see. They're like, wow, that looks nice and things came together really well. We're going to pin these in on here as well. On the longer ones, maybe do about four pin nails. Line it up. First one maybe here on the end. Nice and tight. And then make sure your boards are pressed in. If I've got a little gap there, I'm going to press on that board to get that gap to disappear when I pin that on there. Okay, then we're just kind of work your way around and pin them on. I'm going to do this next big one here, next, and we'll finish up the small one. On your smaller ones, the top, we're going to do the same process. We're going to flip your board up, or your project upside down and do the same thing. Again, don't forget to put it on the miters. Spread it around everywhere. Notice again, I'm leaving a little dry spot on the bottom because there's a a gap. space on my project where there's a gap where there's no glue's not going to attach anywhere there anyway, so it's okay to leave a little gap. When you get three of them on and pin nailed, before you glue the last one on, I would double check and just make sure it still fits in case things have moved on you. Because we can always make little adjustments if needed. Cool. Pin this one on. Again, I got a little small gap there, so I'm going to press really hard to get rid of that gap. And that pin nail will hold things tight. Okay, my last one here, over on this side. Lining it up with no glue, and I can see I've actually got a little gap where I might want to trim a tiny bit off on this thing because it's coming pretty good here, but then there's a gap over here. So I'm actually going to trim off the tiniest little bit off this one just to make sure. Just a reminder, you can bring your blade down, bump it into the side of the blade, hold it tight, trim off a little bit there, and then you can check it. So again, I would do this before putting glue on the final piece and making sure I've got a tiniest little gap more. But we want these perfect. So I'm going to do this one more time. Just don't cut it too short. That looks better. That fits in there nice and perfect now. So. Again, the little extra things you do, make these things look nice, really pays off, rather than just a sloppy job, so. And it does take practice. I know, you know, when you guys start cutting your miters, 
you might cut things too short or big gaps. It just takes a lot of practice, but it really looks nice if you get it <coughs> to line up perfect. I got to put glue on these miters as well. Okay. Line that up. We'll pin it on there. Now we could just clamp this. If you wanted to not use the pin nailer, you could just glue and clamp it. Nice thing about the pin nails is it holds things in place for you. And you don't have to wait the 30 minutes before removing anything. Because the, the pin nails basically act like clamps. So those are going to be on there. We can wipe up any wet glue. Again, the top ones, same process. The only difference on the top, I'm going to flip this upside down, is we're not putting these on directly flush with the, the top edge. It has you use a spacer board. I've got these, they're in the tool cabinet, they're just an eighth inch thick board. <coughs> and I want you to put the spacer boards down first around the top. You just surround them. That way when you go to do your small ones, they actually lift off the ground an eighth of an inch. And the reason for this is when we put the lid on, your lid's going to have a little lip on it that catches on this little space. So when these one, these spacer boards will just lift them off the ground, the amount that we need. And then we'll glue and pin nail these on the same way. So glue them, pin them, should be good. Okay, once you get them all on, you'll get my signature. Don't forget. You can always cut more off, but you can't cut more back on, so cut them big your first time. Thank you, guys.